John 8, 3 to 11. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So, mayroong babaeng nahuli sa akto ng kasalanan at sabi nila ayon sa batas ni Moses ay merong verse na dapat nasundin at iba to sa kanya hanggang siya siya ay mamatay. Tulad ng nakikita natin sa illustration. That verses had been weaponized by the ancient Israelites to kill people, to kill sinners, to kill people that they considered sinners or were adjudged as sinners by the law or by their laws. Now what do you say? Tanong nila kay Jesus. Let anyone of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her, sabi ni Jesus. At this, those who heard began to go away. Gusto nilang batuhin ang babae hanggang mamatay dahil nahuli sa kasalanan at dahil sabi nila, ito ang utos ni Moses. Kaya sinabi naman ni Jesus, o sige, yung qualified ang maunang bumato, yung walang kasalanan. Pero lahat kasi sila disqualified. So, isa-isa silang tumalikod at umalis sa lugar na yon. Walang naglakas ng loob na bumato dahil may kasalanan din naman sila. Pwedeng hindi adultery, baka pride, baka lying, baka arrogance. Kasi gigil na gigil ang mga tao, ang mga relihiyoso sa sins na may kinalaman sa sex. Pero ang dami nilang pinapalampas at hindi pinapasing ibang sins. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, hindi lang yan ang sins sa mundo, marami pang iba. So sige kayo, suriin niyo mga sarili niyo, kayong walang kasalanan, bao ng bumato, wala namang nakapaglakas loob. Dahil lahat may kasalanan, lahat disqualified. Romans 3, 10 to 12 As it is written, There is no one righteous, not even one. Romans 3.23, all have sinned. Ang mga relihiyoso ba ay may karapatang lumitis, manghusga, at magparusa, so-called magdisiplina ng mga kapwa-tao nagkasala o hinuhusgahan nilang makasalanan? Sabi ni Jesus, Luke 6.37, Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Dapat bang i-judge, i-condemn ng tao ang kapwa-tao? Dapat bang i-judge ng sinner ang kapwa-sinner? Kasi ang linis ng tingin nila sa sarili nila para kalad ka rin nila yung babae na yun sa public place at babatuhin nila hanggang mamatay. Pero nung kinonfront sila ni Jesus, makasalanan din sila. Kaya hindi sila naglakas loob na ituloy ang balak nilang batuhin ang babae. Hindi nila itiduloy ang pagsunod sa law of Moses kasi pag sinunod nila, pati sila babatuhin din hanggang mamatay kasi lahat naman may kasalanan. So, ang tanong, ang tao ba may karapatang mag-judge ang kapwa-tao? Lalo't ang sinner na tao, meron ba siyang karapatang mag-judge ng kapwa-taong sinner din? The answer, of course, is no. John 8, 15-16, You judge by human standards. I pass no judgment on no one, sabi ni Jesus. Si Jesus nga hindi nagjudge, tao pa. Dapat bang i-judge at i-condemn ng tao ang kapwa-tao? No. But if I do judge, sabi ni Jesus, my decisions are true because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. So even if Jesus would judge, He does not judge by human standards. He does not judge by the law of Moses. He does not judge by religious doctrines. Even if Jesus would judge, He does judge by God's standard, with God the Father. And Jesus says, He does not judge. Luke 12, 14, Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Ayaw niya. Luke 12, 57, Why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? John 12, 47, If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. 
For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. Ang linaw ng sinasabi ni Jesus. Kahit daw yung mga tao nakarinig na ng kanyang salita at hindi pa rin sumunod, hindi pa rin niya huhusgahan. Kasi sabi niya, hindi naman ako dumating para manghusgay, kundi para magligtas. So ang tanong, kung si Christ hindi dumating para manghusga, kundi para magligtas, bakit maraming Christians are in the business ng panghusga? Therefore, hindi business ni Jesus ang ginagawa nila. Kaninong business yun? God does not judge. John 5.22 Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son. And then Jesus says, I do not judge anyone, but the Son does not judge nga. Dapat bang i-judge, i-condemn by human standards ng tao ang kapwa-tao, ng sinner ang kapwa-sinner? No. 1 Corinthians 4.3 I care very little if I am judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself, sabi ni Paul. So according to Paul, dapat bang i-judge, i-condemn ng tao ang kanyang sarili? No. Romans 2.1, You therefore have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else. For at whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself. Because you who pass judgment do the same things. Dapat bang i-judge ang kapwa-tao? No. Matthew 7, 1 to 3, Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye? When all the time, there is a plank in your own eye. You hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. In other words, sinasabi ni Jesus, be perfect muna bago ka mang judge ng iba. So dapat bang i-judge, i-condemn ng tao ang kapwa-tao, ng sinner ang kapwa-sinner? Dapat bang silipin, alisin ng tao ang puwing ng kapwa kung siya man ay may puwing din? No! Kung may kasalanan ng tao, di ba Diyos lamang ang siyang tanging may kakayanan at karapatang tumimbang at humusga sa Kanya? Psalm 96.13 Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for He comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the people in His faithfulness. So yun daw, pag nag-judge man ang Diyos, in righteousness. Not in cruelty, not in unkindness, not in revenge, but in righteousness. Only God is righteous and faithful, and therefore, only God is judge. Teachers should teach, but should not police or spy or investigate for compliance. Nagtuturo tayo ng mga kabutihan, loob, kagandahan, kabutihan, kaayusan, pagiging makadyos. Pero hindi tayo dapat magpulis, magbantay at magmanman sa mga tao kung sinusunod nila yung itinuturo. Colossians 2.16 Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink. And with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. Huwag ka daw magpadjudge sa kapwa mo tao lamang. James 4.11, Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them, speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. Therefore, teachers should teach, but should not judge. 1 Corinthians 4.5, Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time, Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. At that time, each will receive their praise from God. 1 Corinthians 10.29 I am referring to the other person's conscience, not yours. For why is my freedom being judged by another's conscience? Sinasabi ni Paul, Bakit ba yung laya ko ay huhusgahan mo according to your taste? Bakit mo ako susukatin by your standard? Bakit yung konsyensya mo ang ipapataw mo sa akin? Kung sa konsyensya mo, ayaw mong gawin yan, hindi huwag mong gawin, pero hindi mo ipapataw dapat sa akin ang konsyensya mo kasi meron akong sariling konsyensya. 
teacher should teach, but should not punish those that they teach. Kahit nasa tingin nila ay hindi nakaabot, hindi nakasunod o lumabag. James 2, 12-13 Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Nakikita niyo nila, malino na sinasabi ni Paul? Magsalita ka, kumilos ka, bilang tao na tatanggap ng mga batas na nagpapalaya, na susukatin sa batas na nagpapalaya. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Yun daw hindi mapagpatawad, hindi maawain, hindi mabait, yun din ang tatanggapin nila. At sabi, mercy triumphs over judgment. Ang habag ang nangingibabaw kesa sa judgment. Pero bakit marami ang hilig-hilig mag-judge kahit nasa in the process, hindi merciful. 2 Corinthians 2, 7-8 There was an unnamed person that caused the church and the writer a lot of grief. He was punished, not mentioned how, and the writer urges the members to forgive him. So yung church merong pinaparusahan, may dinidisiplina dahil may nagawang kasalanan. Pero itong writer, si Paul, sabi niya, now, instead, you ought to forgive and comfort him so that he will not be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. I urge you, therefore, to reaffirm your love for him. Muli niyong ulit-ulitin sa kanya na mahal niyo siya at ipakita niyo yon kasi sobra na niya yung napahirapan ng loob niya. Siya ay iginugupo na ng sobrang hirap ng loob. Ecclesiastes 12.14 For God, not anyone else, will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. At dahil makapangyarihan ng Diyos, hindi ba niya kayang tumimbang at humusga? At kung kailangan magparusa sa talagang dapat parusahan at disiplinahin? Yes! Yes na yes. 1 Samuel 24.12 May the Lord judge between you and me, and may the Lord avenge the wrongs you have done to me, but my hand will not touch you. So may bahala na ang Diyos sa'yo, pero hindi ako magbubuhat ng kamay sa'yo. Diyos, ang bahala. Diyos ang bathala. 1 Samuel 24.15 May the Lord be our judge and decide between us. May He consider my cause and uphold it. May He vindicate me by delivering me from your hand. Lahat ipinapa sa Diyos. 2 Chronicles 19.7 Now let the fear of the Lord be on you. Judge carefully, for with the Lord our God there is no injustice or partiality or bribery. Isaiah 33:22 For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, it is he who will save us. So hindi sinabing it is he who will judge and condemn us, it is he who will save us. And how can God save? Why will God save? Siya naman ang lawgiver. So siya rin ang pwedeng mag-provide ng forgiveness and he will save us even from the law. Kailangan ba talagang tulungan? At madalas ay pangunahan pa ng tao ang Diyos sa paghusga at pagpaparusa sa nagkakasala? No. Job 21.22 Can anyone teach knowledge to God since He judges even the highest? Job 34.23 God has no need to examine people further that they should come before Him for judgment. And First Chronicles 16.14 He is the Lord our God. His judgments are all in the earth. Could this be referring to natural law, which is impartial? It is really just, and by the book, it is on automatic. Kasi pag may ginagawa tayong mali, may bunga agad na mali, yun na ba ang judgment na sinasabi na automatic, it is on the earth? Kasi natural law yan. At laging umiiral. Pag ba yung natural law nagbigay na ng judgment, kailangan pa dagdagan ng tao, madodoble na yung parusa? Double jeopardy na ang tawag dyan, kahit in the court of law. Pag tao ang judge sa kapwa-tao, pag religion or religious ang judge sa religious offenses and offenders, ang bunga, disaster. 
tulad ng mga Christian martyrs. They were judged by their fellow men, whether the judgment was religious or political or social or all of it, disaster ang nangyari ng mga tao ang naguhusga sa kapwa-tao. Sa mga religious wars, halimbawa, mga wars between Protestants and Catholics, nagpapataya, naguubusan sila all in the name of God because they judge one another as wrong, as evil. At napakasama ng bunga pag ang tao nagjudge sa kapwa-tao, especially on religious and spiritual matter. Kasi nasasubvert, nalalabanan, nababaliwala yung mga kautusan ng Diyos at katuroan ng Diyos kasi papatay ka para sa Diyos, sa ngalan ng Diyos, nababaligtad. Kaya naman, napakarami nagpatayan, katulad ng mga nakikita natin sa illustrations, mga Protestants, Catholics, killing each other, at napakarami mga namatay in the name of God because both parties think na siya ang tama at dapat niyang i-judge ang kapwa niya on religious and spiritual matter. There were executions of Huguenots no? na nangyari, na nakikita natin sa mga illustration, all on religious issues. At sino ang nagjudge dyan? Kung sino ay makapangyarihan. Kung makapangyarihan yung mga Protestants, they kill the Catholics. Pag makapangyarihan yung mga Catholics, they kill the Protestants. Katulad halimbawa nitong chamber ng Inquisition. This is an artist rendition. Yung mga taong sinasabi ng simbahan na may mga kasalanan, may mga kasalanan ginagawa laban sa Diyos, laban sa simbahan, tinotorture nila. Sobra iba-ibang mga torture all in the name of God. This is what happens when people sit as judges on fellow humans. Lalo pag religious judges. Itong isang kasangkapan na ito, a hand crusher, no? fitted with a cross to emphasize that the torture is being carried out on behalf of the Christian God. My goodness, what a misrepresentation. So yung mga artist, halimbawa, gumawa ka ng mga uh, nililook mo na nalalaswaan yung simbahan, nawawasakan yung mga buto ng kamay mo, nagpaint ka ng nalalaswaan sila, may ginawa kang hindi nila nagustuhan, magkakaroon ng judgment, religious judgment. This is the horror when the church has police powers or when the state does police work for the church. Pagka ang religious competition mo ay gagamitan mo ng dahas, iyong ihuhusgahan at paparusahan, napakaraming mga kasamaan ang nagagawa ng tao laban sa kapwa-tao. Tulad itong nasa illustration natin, mga babaeng pinagkakamalang mga witches, sa mga basis naman ng kanilang dark ages mentality, pinapatay, pinapahirapan, at napakaraming nagiging biktima. At siyempre, si Stephen mismo, naging biktima ng mga Jews na na-offense sila in a religious way kay Stephen. Binato nila hanggang mamatay. Of course, this is a rendition by Rembrandt which is done in an artistic way beyond the period of the real lifetime of Stephen. Heto pa ang isang gadget, isang gamit ng pagpapahirap sa mga tao. Nakaharap yung mga religious leaders at sila ay nagpaparusa dahil ang mga tao ito ay hinuhusgahan nilang merong religious sins and offenses. And mga maraming sinusunog. Noong mga araw lang, nag-translate ka ng Bible, susunugin ka ng simbahan dahil ayaw nila ipatranslate yung Bible. Ang dami-daming kasamaan na ginagawa ang mga relihiyoso laban sa mga taong ikinoconsider nilang makasalanan. This kind of religious trial and punishment happened throughout history. And it happens till now, although in modern ways. Kung noong unang panahon, may mga tatawagin kang heretic, may mga medieval witch hunt. Sa mga ating panahon, marami pa rin mga paglilitis ang mga relihiyoso. Naglilitis ng mga members na nagkaasala by their standards, by the standards of the law, by the standards of religious teachings, at kung ano ang rin condemnation at parusa ang tatanggapin mo. Religion should have no judicial and or police powers. Religion may legislate, teach, or set standards and policies, etc. But should leave the judicial and police and executive powers to God alone. What are we saying? Magturo tayo na magturo ng lahat ng tama, lahat ng ating religious dogma and teachings and the doctrines 
Pero dapat ang paghuhusga doon sa mga lalabag, ipa sa Diyos. Kasi Diyos lamang ang pwede mag-judge ng tama. And He even saves us from the law. That God saves. Jesus came to save, not to judge. Romans 14, to 4 Accept the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything. But another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Apply this beyond food issues. Hayaan ang mga tao na i-process ang mga katuroan. Ito isundin at different levels according to their conscience and capacity. Bantayan mo ang sarili mo, hindi ang kapwa mo. Kati, pati nga, sarili mo, hindi mo dapat dinadjudge eh. Because Jesus came to save, not to judge. Why will we be in the business of judging and punishing sinners? Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master, servants stand or fall. And they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. God makes people stand, not fall. God saves, not condemns. John 5.24 Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Romans 8.33-39 Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, nor any powers, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Very clear. Pagkarami-rami nating binasang verses at pagkarami-rami nating illustrations na ipinakita, ang disaster, pag ang religious people judge fellow humans, lalo na yung ginadjudge nila by religious standards. Let us teach, yes. Umakay tayo, yes. Mag-encourage tayo, yes. Let us model uh, an ideal that we believe is the ideal, yes. Pero hindi natin kailangan parusahan, saktan ang mga taong sa tingin natin ay nagkukulang sa pagsunod sa mga katuruan na yon. It is up to God to do the judging. And God saves. God does not judge according to the many verses that we have already read. Pagka ba ang tao ay natuto ng mga verses, kailangan talaga siya maging judgmental? Kailangan talaga siya maging self-righteous? Kailangan ba talaga ng taong laging i-defend ang Diyos, i-defend ang truth, and to offend people in defense of the truth? Hindi yan ipinagagawa sa atin. Ang utos sa atin, love one another. Accept one another. Restore one another. Hindi tayo kahit kailan inutusan na mag-judge. So, religious people, church people should be in the business of loving, of teaching, of encouraging, but not in the business of judging and hurting people, throwing stones that kill. Pag-aralan natin kung paano tayo makakapamuhay ng tama na hindi tayo nagiging tulad ng mga Pharisees na laging napapagalitan ni Jesus. Yes, be righteous but don't be self-righteous. Be just, but do not be judgmental. Ang hinahanap sa atin ng Ama ay pagiging maawain, mabait, at mabuti sa kapwa. Yun ang tunay na spirituality, hindi yung pagpaparusa sa mga taong kinoconsider nating makasalanan. Hindi sa pagsipa sa kanila, hindi sa pananakit sa kanila, kundi sa pagtanggap, pag-ibig, at pagmamahal at pagmamalasakit. Love wins. That's why Jesus loved. And God is love. 
pag-isipan, pagbulay-bulayan kung paano i-apply sa ating daily life. Bakit natin? Kung gustuhin, lagi na lang tayo magparusa, magbantay, magpulis. Hindi yan ang itinuro sa atin ng Diyos. God bless us all.